Hello everyone, welcome back to Build and Repair and Restore. Thanks for watching, hope you guys enjoy the content. If you do, make sure you give us a like, don't forget to subscribe and you can also join the channel for exclusive content. Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to briefly just run through uh, the design of the home that we are planning to build in Dominica. Um, just show you guys um, some of the construction details. Um, I've received some drawings now from the architect. So I'll show you what, you know, like typical Dominican drawings look like. Um, typical build. Um, this house is very, 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 very simple. Um, I've wanted it to be that way for a particular reason. Um, this is hopefully uh, the first of many builds that I will do in Dominica. So um, this is going to be our this is going to be our home, our first home. Let's say um, I hope to build again in the future, um, but this this will be the first one, and this will be the first complete house that I'll be building as well in Dominica. So it's a little bit of a, a trial run for me as well. And um, because obviously the, some of the techniques are slightly different in the UK, some of them are similar, some of them are simpler, some of them are more uh, more detailed and more involved. So it's a bit of a mixture, but I'm going to try and show you guys some of the drawings on the screen. I'm going to go through, explain some of the drawings and um, some of the details and what we're trying to achieve. So without further ado, let's get into the first drawing so let's see so here we've got the site plan essentially site plan so this shows you um this is the if those of you have watched the videos and seen me clearing the land and so on this will show you here where you've got the village road which is where i normally park out here um this where the cursor is is where i've been sort of cutting the stairs in so around this area here so you you'd park out here and then you walk up the stairs onto the land now there is a slight um error on this drawing which is being rectified now or probably done now where the architect um actually had the orientation 90 degrees the wrong way so this is the the balcony of the house here and this is supposed to turn 90 degrees clockwise so the balcony should actually be here and um this is where the view is from the property where I recently cut the bushes along this line here. So, um, so that just, just to explain, so this needs to flip all the way around. Um, this will be the staircase that leads up onto the balcony here. And then this staircase here will be from the kitchen. We have to have a secondary exit, which is typical, like a British house, you'd have a back door or back door out the kitchen or on a side door you've got to have a secondary means of escape so this will be the 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 back door from the kitchen to go into the garden so well, obviously this this staircase will be somewhere over here um, once it's all sort of turned around and the staircase will be somewhere closer to to the entrance of the land around here um, so you can see the house is perfectly square it's 25 feet by 25 feet so it's uh, 725 well, actually, including the the balcony, which is five foot out, um, I believe it's seven hundred and fifty square feet. The whole house, so it's a, it's a reasonably uh, small house, simple house, two bedroom, and uh, you can see the shape of the the land is quite irregular. It's quite a weird shape, um, but you know we got plans to sort of make it work um, and using as much of the space as we can. You can see the space of the size of the land here is. 3,616 square feet for the size of the land and the house is 750 square feet so so let's move on to the floor plan of the house try and show you guys what the floor plan of the house looks like so again you can see it here 750 square feet is the size of the house so here we have that staircase that leads up onto the porch the porch will be quite a fairly substantial size porch it's the full width of the house, so it's 25 feet long and it'll be five foot deep. The way at the moment we've asked for this to be designed is that the porch does not have a cover. Um, what we've learned in the past years uh, when it comes to building porches in Dominica, particularly 
after having, you know, like um, 2019, particularly where we had a Cat 5 hurricane here, which was hurricane, um, I don't know which one it was now, uh, Maria, Hurricane Maria was 2019. Um, we had a lot of issues where people had built their roofs and brought the roof all the way over to the porch. Now this creates a weak point here where if wind gets underneath the, the porch, which is obviously open, it can sort of lift the roof in this area, which would cause damage to the main roof. So the, the advice for building porch roofs now is to have them as sacrificial roofs. So you would have the roof of the main house, say this square here, with about a one foot overhang typically. And then what you'd have is a secondary roof covering the porch, which is which would, would, would sit in slightly underneath this roof. So um, so if you did have damage to the roof in a hurricane, it would not it would take this roof off um, and not take off the you know the main roof of the house or or damage the main roof. So but what we've decided for now is to actually have the porch completely open. There's going to be no roof on the porch. If we decide we want to put a cover in here, we'll put it later. Um, but I think for what we want to achieve, we don't want this porch to actually have a roof, it'll sort of be like an open terrace sort of porch. And if we want to have a sort of shaded covered area, we want to create a second area in the garden, like sort of patio gazebo sort of area, which we could use for that. Um, well, yeah, we've got the front door here in the center of the house, so we sort of you know, um, the house is very symmetrical. So you've got an entrance in the middle. And first thing you have is sort of an open plan kitchen dining area. So you've got a kitchen on the left hand side, um, which is 12 foot by uh, 10 foot. And everything is done in feet and inches in, in Dominica. It's very similar to the America. So sometimes I have to keep on trying to sort of recalculate it um into millimeters or centimeters so typically one foot is about 30 centimeters so that will give you 10 foot is about three meters or so um then the dining room is pretty much the same size as well um once you once you get through here um these are walls here internal walls we enter the second half of the house essentially it's split right down the middle in half here we've got a bedroom on the left here which is 11 and a half feet by nine and a half feet. You have another bedroom on the right hand side, same, exactly the same size. And right in the center, we have the bathroom, which is a small bathroom, sink, toilet, four foot wide shower. Um, very straightforward. Okay, so that's the plan of the layer. So moving along, this is sort of looking at the house from the front of the building. So as you can see, we've got a staircase on the right hand side here. We've also got a staircase on the left hand side coming out from the garden, uh, into the garden from the kitchen. Um, the, the, this design, as far as the elevations are more for planning. So as far as the look of the, the building, uh, this is sort of like a standard sort of thing. For instance, the balcony is not going to look like that. We don't want sort of spindle balconies it's going to look totally different like than that. We're still sort of deciding, but it's going to be more sort of uh, contemporary as far as the banisters and so on. So that's going to be totally different. The, the front door again is going to be totally different. The mirror, the windows are probably a little different than that. These are typical windows that we have in Dominica, which is sort of like a aluminium, a white aluminium sort of stash windows, very common here. Um, but again, we might not have our windows looking like that. So this is sort of more for planning. Um, and you can see the back now, again, this is the back of the house. So you can see bedroom window at the back, bedroom window on the back, and this will be a window above the shower at the back of the house, which again is very typical, uh, for Dominica. So if we look here now, we can look, we have the left hand side of the house so that's the kitchen again leading out onto the small balcony or staircase to go out through the back and as you can see the porch overhanging and there's no roof so where i was talking about having a roof we would have a roof potentially from from here attached to the house and it would sort of 
sort of slope out like that. And that would be a sacrificial roof covering this area if we wanted to have a roof on there. Um, let's move it along. So services, again, the services on here are very generic, sort of the architect said it's just best that he just sort of puts the typical stuff on there for planning. But once you're building, you can put your lights and sockets wherever you want. So you can see, you know, he just put light switches here, sockets, lights, uh, again, lights here, um, light switches, switches and sockets in the kitchen where your cooker's gonna be, all these things. These will all change um, once we sort of design the internal layout of the, of the house. So again, this is just sort of planning stuff. Um, also our lights, I mean, are gonna be, we we're planning to have exposed exposed what we call exposed rafters so we will see all the rafters in the ceiling so it'll be quite high um in uk we call it vaulted often um there won't be any like ceiling plasterboard ceilings or anything like that so most of the lights in these areas will be sort of probably hanging down uh lights or we could maybe put some more lights on as well to give some sort of secondary lighting um but most of the lights will probably be sort of hanging down sort of chandelierish sort of type lamps uh hanging from the the high ceilings so it will just also help to create more feeling of space in the house um as well so you can see we've got sewer pipes here as well um currently we have a septic tank somewhere over here so if we can reuse the septic tank we'll probably have the waste pipes running this direction and um, you've got the cold water supply here again running in to the kitchen and to the uh, bathroom and then what we will have here is we don't have boilers here like you know gas boilers and stuff we don't really use gas that much we use gas for cookers but they tend to be sort of like cylinder gases which you you get replaced when they emptied and they get connected to the cookers um some people they store them outside and then there's a point to connect it which you can disconnect it or they might store it underneath the kitchen sink or something like that um so we don't use gas for heating water but we will have sort of an electric heater which will elect like an instant electric heater which which will heat the water we have them in this house that we're staying in now and they work brilliantly um they just heat as soon as you turn the tap on within a few seconds you get hot water um, so we're going to use that. So we'll probably have it stored under the kitchen sink and it will feed the kitchen sink and then also feed hot water to the bathroom, the shower and stuff like that. So that's probably how we will heat the water. Um, so, so now we're moving into sort of technical, some technical drawings now of the, uh, substructure, substructure. So here we've got the foundation plan of the house. Now, looking closely at it, just try and run a few, a few bits of it. Um, we have, Dominica is, most of our land is sloping. So most of our houses are built on columns. And our house, although it has a very small sort of slope, um, we'll be building it traditional way with columns again. Um, but the columns will be, um, so you can see these are the columns here, these little black squares are the columns of the house so this area will be the porch which will have a will be a concrete slab connected to the entire house it'll be sort of one concrete slab but it will have three pillars in the front of it here the front of the house itself will have three the middle of the house will have three and the back of the house will have three so like 12 pillars will have to be concrete pillars which will be reinforced with rebar. They'll be rebarring on them. They'll be rebar tying all the columns together. Um, they will be rebar in the trench, which will run all the way where you see the shaded areas of the trenches. Um, this outline here, the thin outline that you can see is the outline of the trench. So uh, according to the drawings, we have these squares are pads for the columns to sit on so we got to dig these three foot by three foot square pads and then we'll have the trenches dug 
which connect them together. So the trenches will probably be about two foot wide and they will connect all these pads together. And then what we do is we will pour a sort of concrete base in each of the pads. I think the concrete base is supposed to be about a foot or something like that, but it is detailed on another drawing. And so there will be sort of like a steel mesh pad here, which the uh, vertical steel columns or steel rebars will be connected to. So what we do tend to do, we'll dig the trenches, um, lay the concrete pads and the steel steel work in each column. Uh, then we will box in these columns with, you know, like plywood, sort of form them in plywood, pour them in concrete. So you'll have basically all of these, these columns sticking out of the ground in concrete, obviously all at the correct height. And then in between the columns here, um, again, we will have steel and concrete bases run all the way in the, sort of like a grid. And then we will build, as you can see here, eight inch concrete blocks in foundation wall. Um, so they will be built up to the height of the top of the columns. So all the way around the house, we'll essentially have a wall surrounding it and connecting all these beams together. Um, once you've got the, up to this height, then all the insides will be backfilled, um, just like how we would do uh, a concrete slab in the UK, backfilled, sand, all this stuff, um, hardcore, whatever, and uh, DPM, and then concrete filled up to the level of our, what we would, we would call a DPC in the UK. Um, that's what we'd get up to there. We don't use DPCs on, on our walls here, building the walls, not necessary. Um, but there'll be DPMs in the concrete floor base. So um, let's see what else we've got here. So there we go. It's, it's noted here again, three foot by three foot reinforced concrete column footing. So that's what I was saying about here. And as you can see, we've got all the measurements, very detailed, which makes it a lot easy for, you know, the builder to work to. So here's a ring, build, ring beam detail, which is a typical sort of detail on how these steel beams will be connected up. So these are the posts. If you look at the image before, to get the orientations, you can see you've got one, two, three, four going this way. So when you look at the next drawing, you can sort of see your orientation. One, two, three, four. So this is sort of a side elevation of the foundation. And what we have here is the column in the front of the uh, porch, the column, the back of the porch, essentially where the front door wall is. Then this is the center of the building and this will be the columns at the back. And you can see some more detail here of what the columns will be looking like. So. They need to be eight inches uh, wide, the columns, and they will have steel work here. So that's rebar, um, two number four size rebar. I think that's half inch in the rebar. So you'll have four of those, and then they will be sort of wrapped around with metal stirrups and tied to sort of give it rigidity. Um, and you can see the detail here says uh, 10 millimeter stirrups at H eight inch centers center. So that's quite detailed there. Again, you can see, um, how, how steels are to be connected together. Um, they must overlap by two feet and they will be tied as well. And then there'll be stirrups all around these as well. So this is sort of like this steel beam detail here is basically the steel beams that will be sitting on the top of the columns that go all the way around these all the way around and then when you cast the concrete foundation they will also get cast in that concrete foundation at the same time as well okay so again this is a very 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 simple build very very simple very simple uh steel work as well um some of the houses here can be very 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 detailed 
particularly two-story, three-story houses, um, especially if they're on more slopey ground, then there's a lot more engineering that has to go into it because we do have, you know, sort of minor earthquakes and stuff like that. So steel work is used a lot and a lot of concrete. So looking at the cross section now, we have uh, some more details. So this is the back of the house. You can see the back window, back window, bathroom here, uh, internal walls here. And if we look from this section, we can see the concrete pad. So the, the hole has got to be dug three foot wide. The concrete base for the pillars will be two foot wide. And I think according to this, we've got 10 inches. So it's got to be 10 inches thick. Okay. And here again, we see it 36 inches by 36 inches by 10 inches reinforced concrete column footing. So that's the first sort of concrete thing. You can see there's some hardcore here as well. That's been laid in there as well. Then, then the steel will be like sort of like a flat mat here which will be connected to a vertical um, set of rebars that we looked at earlier. And this will be then encased in concrete. So this dark line here is the ground level. So this is all sort of soil. This is all backfilled with soil. And then two feet from the ground here, we will have the compacted fill here which is our suit of, sort of like our hardcore and, and what we would have as our Mot 1 and stuff like that. And then two inches of sand binding on top, then we'll put a DPM, and then we will pour this four inches of concrete, which will which will go, um, which will be connected to this, these areas here, which is where we had that steel rebar detail. So all of the slab and this rebar will all be tied together. And the top of these columns will have rebar sticking out which will also get tied to these to these sort of horizontal laid ones as well so this whole um this so whole sort of slab will be connected all the way down um, by a steel to the to the ground so it'd be very strong um so yeah let's see we can move on here we've got some roof detail here as well as you can see oh this is another thing that gets done as well how do the walls typically are built here in the UK, when we build corners, we sort of build, um, we interlock the corners of the, of, the, of the bricks and so on. It's not typically how it's done here. What normally happens is the walls get built up to say about this line here. Let's see if I can zoom in. The, the walls will typically get built to, to this line here. And, um, and same thing on the other side. And then these corners then get boxed in and because uh, the rebar will be running all the way up here and then these will get poured in and they will be tied the corners together so the corners of the house will basically get tied together with concrete and the steel will run all the way up into this section here just above the the roof then what happens is we do the same horizontal steel bars that we did uh that we did here in the lower parts and it gets run around the same sort of perimeter above all of the internal walls. And then this area gets boxed in, this sort of white area here, will then get boxed in and cast in concrete as well. So all these, um, all the way around the perimeter of the house, again, gets tied down into these vertical columns, which get tied down to the ground. Um, also with our window lintels, Typically, they get cast, um, boxed in and cast above the windows as well, um, unlike using, say, like a reinforced precast steel lintel, which in a case like this sort of house, you could, you, could, you could do that. But oftentimes, we'll build a wall up to, say, up where the top of the window height is, and then they will be boxed in and cast with rebar, a steel lintel in place above it, and then you'd continue the rest of the brickwork. Um, up, up to there for many houses and i'm not sure i've got to look into the, the measurements here but oftentimes the windows actually end up right underneath this lintel here anyway so you wouldn't have to have a sort of another cast lintel this this uh, bit of concrete would become the lintel above the, the window as well 
Okay, so let's see. Also, if you look at the roof here, you see in the same, it's going to be galvanized sheeting, which is again, very typical here. Galvanized sheeting, which you can see here with some battens here going horizontally, which are nailed onto our vertical rafters. So again, similar to the UK, we have our vertical rafters. We usually have a, a breathable membrane, and then we will have our sort of horizontal uh, or lateral battens, and then we'll nail our tiles to that. But here we would either nail or screw the galvanized sheeting, uh, sort of like corrugated galvanized, and that will become the roof what it's made with. Um, we can see some of the rafters here. Uh, it says two by fours to be used here for these um, battens. So a lot bigger than we would typically use for battens. Again, hurricanes and so on. Um, it's got to be, you know, stronger. And the rafters here are two by six, which is fairly typical. So we've got one more roof detail here, which is bird's eye view of our roof detail. Um, we can see here, we've got a one inch overhang of our roof all the way around. And obviously that will have um, uh, fascia boards and guttering and so on. We're not going to have any soffits. So you, when you look up in where you would see the soffits, you will see the rafters there. So it'll sort of be a bit exposed. Um, when you do the exposed rafter, what we tend to do is sheet the entire roof with plywood. Um, we'll be using sort of like a decorative plywood, which will be probably like a tongue and groove, uh, tongue and groove 12 mil or something, something like that, half inch ply, um, which may get stained or painted depending on what you want your ceiling to look like from inside or varnished or whatever. We would basically cover the entire roof of that, then put the battens on, then put the, uh, the galvanized. So when you look around the edges, you will see the rafters and then you will see the sort of plywood above the rafters. Same thing for the inside. And it, it does really, really look beautiful. I'll try and see if I can show you guys some images of what it would typically look like. Um, um, I'll add that to the video and um, then you get an idea of what, what the style is. Um, so you can see for our hip rafters here. So it's, it's hips, four hips on this roof. Again, very straightforward, very simple. Um, everything is equal, so it should make it a lot easier to build. Um, two foot by eight foot is the size that's specified for our rafters, um, for our hip rafters. And the rafters in between, two foot by six foot at two foot centers, which is about 600, 600 mil centers. Again, you know, you can go smaller, uh, uh, 400 with four and a half or so. You can do that as well if you want, but this is what's specified. Again, you can see the open porch area, which sort of extends uh, in front of the house. Um, yeah, so that's the roof framing plan. So I think that is pretty much um, all of the detail of the house. And um, I think it gives an idea of what our typical build is like. And um, for me, I'm, I, I wanted to do something really, really simple. Um, I'm not an extravagant person anyway, um, but also I want to mention the, the aesthetics of the house externally and internally, obviously we're still developing the ideas of what we want to look like inside and outside. We are the, currently leaning towards the outside sort of being cladded, um, the lower part of the house to be sort of, um, cladded or, or sort of stone tile, the lower half of the house which is something that's done here. Um, uh, it's becoming more common. It, it's very, very nice. It's sort of cut stones that are essentially tiled, but they look as if the wall is made out of stone. Um, so we might use that on the lower half and then we may clad the, the upper half in um, sort of vert, um, horizontal cladding and have it sort of varnished or stained or something like that. So as we're looking for sort of naturally natural in keeping look so we might do that but we might actually only do that for two sides of the house the front of the house and the side that faces the road and then the and the other two sides of the house might be rendered and painted with a sort of a sort of a, an earthly creamy sort of brownie cream color so 
we, we're still developing, we're looking at other houses, we're looking at designs, we're looking online, we're getting inspiration and stuff and sort of creating a mood board for what we want it to look like. Um, but um, yeah, so good progress so far. We had these drawings this week. I had a meeting with the architect yesterday. We went to the land and um, finalized a few things to do with the positioning and stuff. And we hope that these drawings get submitted to planning this week. Uh, once they go to planning, we are just literally now waiting for planning approval. So we expect it shouldn't hopefully take too long with these, although Dominica planning can take very long in some circumstances. Processes are, here are a lot slower than places like the UK. Um, things are still done very much manually, um, so they can sort of take time. They still wait. They'll be, they'll be waiting for one particular guy to sign something. Um, so, but hopefully it shouldn't take too long because again, it's a very simple design and our architect is quite confident that it shouldn't really take us too long to get this planning approved. So that's the stage that we're at now. So hopefully we can get an update in the coming weeks about that. In the meantime, um, as you've seen, I'm still doing some clearing down the land. Hope to be down there this week, do some more, continue working on that entrance staircase as well. Um, so watch out for those videos as well. But guys, hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Um, let me know what you think. So far, if you've got any questions, um, suggestions as well of the design, if you look at something and you think, oh, this could be done better as well, we're open to suggestions, um, especially on finishes as well. Um, obviously, we can't really start changing too much of the structure if we're putting it into planning now. But, you know, we're open to some ideas at this time. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys soon on the next one. Take care.